Good morning. Good. Yeah, I think for, for early service anyway, we'll stick with that. So anyway, good to see all of you today. Welcome. We are uh, continuing with this series. We're going to be looking at the values that we've talked about. And, and I want to make sure, um, you know, these are the values that we find present at Emmanuel already. What are the things that this congregation, uh, as you look at the activities and, 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 and the responses and, and the attitudes and the things over the years, what is it that we think is already here? What is it that, that the people of Emmanuel find important? What are the values that we have? So we're going to look at some of those today. Uh, and today's value is going to be that we care for all. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about some of those things and, and see how we see that present here at Emmanuel, but ways too maybe that we can understand that we can grow uh, as, as having that as a value. Good to see all of you today. Uh, we're going to have several different announcements for you when we get to that point, but glad to see you here. Let's rise and uh, do our, our, our greeting uh, from afar and start with our opening song.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment in silence, reflecting on our own sinful condition and our need for Jesus' forgiveness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. And let us pray together. O God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning again. Just a few announcements for you before we continue. So a reminder that all these are printed on the page that you should have picked up when you came in. So hopefully you've done that. Um, so this week we will be having Lord's Supper. Uh, starting tomorrow morning, you can register for either Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, the times will be from 10 to 11 both days and or uh, then from 4 to 6.30. So we'll have uh, groups of 10 that can gather uh, every 15 minutes. So just as we've done for the past several months now. Uh, and we will be meeting here in the fellowship hall. So please make sure to register uh, and get signed up for that. Uh, reminder also to continue registering for worship services. Thank you for those that do that. That helps us keep track and make sure that we've uh, got the right space and all those things. So thank you for doing that. And uh, an update on the, on the school gala. So, you know, the past couple of weeks we had all the items displayed in the back. And uh, it was a great success altogether. There's an announcement in here. Uh, the school gala was able to raise over $50,000. So between table sales uh, and the auction, the auction was a great success. So thank you to the supporters, whether it was through table purchases, uh, donations, auction buyers, and all those things. So thank you so much for that. That will be a tremendous help for uh, the school and the church as, as we work together. Uh, I, those are all the announcements that I, I'm worried about sharing there at this point. And at this time, we'll continue with our offering him. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray that you would accept these offerings. We pray, Lord, that you would use them to further your kingdom in this time and place. We thank you for the many gifts that, you've received, you know, that you have given us that we have received. And Lord, we pray that you would bless us uh, with the spirit to continue to return to you a portion of, that all, of all that you have given us. Lord, to that, we thank you for the, the school gala uh, and, the, and the support that is exhibited there. We thank you for uh, those blessings and those financial gifts, Lord, that the school may continue to be a blessing uh, to this congregation, to the community, to the, to the children and families. Lord, we ask you to bless our school ministry that uh, as its purpose of educating children and sharing your word would continue to thrive in this place. Lord, in this time of uncertainty, with so much worry with COVID and uh, and so many different challenges that are occurring, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us, uh, that by your will, 
uh, all the things will be done to your glory. Lord, we pray for many that are on our hearts and minds, and we ask you to bring health and healing to those that we worry about. We pray for Leonard Mitschke, Gertrude Schlabach, Roy Medock, and Dorothy Cook. Lord, and we lift up to those that we also have in our hearts and minds to you silently now. Lord, we, we pray for uh, those families that grieve the loss of loved ones, and we continue to lift up the family of Chris Swan as they grieve. Lord, surround all families that grieve the loss of loved ones with, with your love, with those who will support them, and continue to point them to you and the promise of eternal life and the, and the joyful hope of being reunited with all those who have gone in faith before them. We give thanks for many celebrations this week with Alan and Eunice Hendrickson and James and Joyce Arndt as they uh, celebrate an wedding anniversaries. For birthdays, we, we celebrate with Kevin Nussbaum, Ruby Coslin, Ruby Moss, Milton McDonald, and Laverne Marker. Lord, we continue to lift up other congregations. We pray for Grace Lutheran in Seguin and Trinity Lutheran in Cumberland, Maryland. Lord, we lift up to you the opportunity we have this week to, to gather and to receive the very body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that, for that gift, and we pray that it would continue to strengthen us in our hope and our trust in you, even as it gives us the gift of forgiveness. Lord, we pray for these things and all of the things in our hearts and minds. In the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's epistle reading comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant in yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but to the interests of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that in, at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. This morning's gospel reading is from Luke chapter 6. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you'll be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, 
and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. message. Good morning. All right, girls. If I ask you what's the golden rule, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you heard of the golden rule? No? The golden rule, you maybe have heard of it and you just didn't know it's called that says treat others the way you want to be treated. Have you heard that before? Has someone said that to you? Yeah, treat others the way you want to be treated. Right, what do you think that means? Not sure? Say that again. Okay, if you don't want something done to you, don't do it to someone else, right? It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to think about. If, if, if I want to be treated a certain way, I need to treat other people that way, right? Jesus talks about this. This rule is from the Bible. It was in our reading this morning. He says, do unto others what you want them to do to you. It's the same thing, just a little bit different words. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Today, we're starting to look at um, the value that we have here at Emmanuel as part of our life with you, part of that, remember we said that not only it means uh, Jesus with us, life with us here at Emmanuel, but also that we're supposed to live life and share that life with the people around us. And one of the things that, that we said is important to doing that here at Emmanuel is caring for all people. We said we care for all because every person matters. And that means that we care for who? Jesus. We care for Jesus, we love Jesus, absolutely. Who else? Family. Our family. Who else do we care for? Everybody. Everybody, right? We said we care for all because every person matters. It's really easy for me to care about my friends and my family. Right, because those are the people I spend a lot of time with, um, that I talk to the most, that I have the best relationships with. It's very easy for me to care for them. But Jesus says we care for all people. He says, um, care even for your enemies. Love your enemies. What's an enemy? Well, we use our heart to care for everyone, but what's an enemy? A person that we don't like, right? Someone that, that um, we don't get along, maybe. And, and Paul says in, in the reading from Philippians, he says, don't just care about what's important to you, care about what's important to everyone. And that means we have to think about what's best for even people we don't like. Is that a hard thing to do? Yeah, yeah, it's really easy for me to think about what's best for Katie, right? Like, I know myself, I know what I like, I know what's best for me. But sometimes, what's best for me is not best for everyone. And sometimes, sometimes I don't want the best for people I don't like, right? Have you ever been there? Like, you kind of want someone to get in trouble? You kind of want something bad to happen? Yeah, because we're sinful human beings. We live with that. But that's not what Jesus is about. So as we think about living life with our community, life with you, life with others, and we think about caring for all people, we know that the way that we want to be treated is the way we should treat others. And it doesn't matter who they are, or what they do in their life, or what they've done to us, that when, when we think about the way that we act because of Jesus, because like Ansley said, we use our hearts, we have Jesus in our hearts. 
when we think about the way that we act because we have Jesus in our hearts, that means we have to think about what's good and best and caring for all people, even the ones we don't like. And that is, that's something that's going to show other people that we really have Jesus in our hearts. Everyone cares for the people they like. But how everyone will know that we have Jesus in our hearts is that we show care and love for people that we don't like or we don't agree with or we don't get along with. And that's really important for us. That shows people that we want to share that Jesus kind of life with them. Okay? We're sleepy this morning. We all are, I can tell. Let's fold our hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us even though sometimes we're your enemies. Help us to show love and care for all people no matter who they are or what they've done. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up this morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, growing up, my family moved around quite a bit. Uh, initially, folks were in the Air Force, and so that brought us to several different places. This microphone today is just not going to be cooperate. Um, we lived in, I was born in Arizona. We moved to the Philippines. Uh, we lived in California, Chicago, uh, just one year there. Eventually got back down to to Texas. Beyond that, as I got older, uh, with seminary, I had moved to St. Louis uh, and Kansas for my, for my vicarage, for the internship. Uh, we also had extended family living all over the place. I had family in Rhode Island, Florida, and, and of course many there in Chicago. Uh, moving wasn't always fun, right? You know, you're leaving friends and, and family, uh, friends behind often, uh, the things that you know, especially at a, at a younger age. Uh, but I got to see so many different things. It was pretty, pretty exciting uh, and to experience all that different stuff, especially later as I, uh, as I got to go back and remember so many of the things that I did. Uh, California was kind of the most exciting for one reason, earthquakes. 
I was second, third, fourth grade kind of thing, and I got to tell you, it's pretty wild to feel the, the ground roll underneath you as you stand on there as an earthquake happens, and I'm not saying I miss it, I'm just saying it was pretty, pretty crazy and a vivid memory uh, living through those kinds of things. Thankfully, nothing, nothing tor- terrible. Uh, but lots of stories, and, and as I got to thinking about the sermon today and thinking of family and uh, this idea of caring for all, uh, a lot of memories came flooding back about family. Uh, my grandfather, Pat, uh, Patrick, short for Patrick, was a carpenter, lifelong carpenter, and I got to see him build all sorts of things over the years. He built a house uh, that he lived in. Uh, he built a house for my grandmother. Uh, still there today, family still lives in it. Um, and I uh, used to go with him on Saturday mornings in the summertime. Uh, there was the, I guess it was kind of like a farmer's market, okay, but uh, nothing like I've seen here. I mean, this thing was in Chicago, it was huge, right? It's kind of like Costco or Sam's of the day kind of thing, right? There was just so much there. Uh, and I remember for some reason, eggs and cheese are the things that Grandpa got at, the, at this market. But um, afterwards, we would go to his buddy Sam's house, and Sam... Uh, it, was, it was quite a different situation. Grandpa lived on the very edge of the city, kind of right on the suburbs, big front yard, front and backyard for Chicago, big front and backyard. Uh, Sam lived more in the, the downtown area, so the houses just really stacked right one on top of another. Not much of a yard to think with, uh, to, or to think of, to describe. And, um, and Sam was biracial, okay? Uh, a, a mixed, mixed race family. And, and I want you to consider that in the 60s and 70s, it was a very different thing, probably a very challenging uh, time. And I loved it. I didn't consider this later that he was, my, that wasn't, that didn't bother my grandfather at all. It was just a, a friend, uh, a good friend, because they would sit for hours. And I can remember uh, the two of them laughing and telling jokes and just reminiscing for hours on a Saturday morning, which, by the way, for a little kid, was boring, right? And by the way, this is also my first time that I got to see cabbage being made at home. Ooh. Sam had this big wine barrel filled up with the cabbage and it was fermenting, right? How many of you have made cabbage before? Sauerkraut. Or sour, I'm sorry, yes, sauerkraut, but used cabbage. All right, you see, this is still traumatic to me, right? So thank you for the cor- correction. <laughs> Making sauerkraut, but using cabbage, and, ugh, it smelled awful. But the, but the point was, I, I, I loved seeing that, that this man, regardless of whatever social structures or things, my challenges might have been there, my grandfather loved this man as a dear friend. Other family. Uh, we have, uh, I have a, a, an aunt that is known as Sister Beatrice. She's a Catholic nun, near 90 years old, and growing up uh, for a long, long time, it had to be decades actually that she was there, but she served in Honduras with the um, impoverished people there. I know since then she's been in El Paso at immigration centers, uh, worked with the Navajo in uh, northern Arizona at, at some of those places. Each side of the family have had aunts and uncles serving with the Peace Corps uh, in Thailand and Sierra Leone. So over and over again, all sorts of family serving people very different from them. Uh, and, and it just sticks with, with you to see that. And I'm sure that as you think of your own families, or think of friends, that, that you know those folks who just serve in those capacities, caring for people no matter the situation, uh, no matter what is there, no matter the pressures or struggles that may happen. And our sermon series then is starting off, as, we, as you've heard, talking about the values that we hold. And today we think about that we care for all because every person does matter. And, and I recognize that I feel like this phrase, that this everyone matters, it's been a bit co-opted of late um, that we have a struggle, and this has nothing to do with any political things that are going on. We came up with this over two years ago, okay? And I hope you remember then going back to last week and we test a little bit. When we say life with you, we respond with Emmanuel, because that is us, Emmanuel, life with you, right? And part of that is what are these values that we have, uh, that, that we believe exist here? Now, as you think about those stories, as you think about the values of, of caring for, for everyone, uh, I want to ask you, what do you think it means, or what comes to mind when you think about caring for others? Because I've given you some of my examples, okay? But when you hear this idea about caring for somebody, what comes to mind for you? 
It's going to require some participation this morning. Okay? What does caring for somebody look like to you? Give me one example. Being courteous. Being courteous? Okay, great. I'll help. I've had many of you care for me uh, by bringing food. Okay, it's supposed to be a little joke there, right? <laughs> many of you have cared for me. I have felt much comfort. Thank you, by the way. Okay? Somebody did say they were going to bring me some fish to me. That's at least, that's healthy. I'm glad. Okay? But what else? What does caring for others look like? We got a lot of work to do. Praying for somebody. That means something to them when you hear that they have prayed for you. Let me ask it this way, maybe. Maybe we'll get more response. How have you felt cared for by somebody? By someone they did or said? How do you feel cared for? Okay. Okay, so, so we care about them when we worry about them. So it sounds like, okay, good. What else? What are ways? That... Support. 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 Good. What else? I thought service was going to be shorter today. Let's, let's, let's talk about this a little. What are ways that we feel cared for? Listening. Listening to somebody. Huge. Isn't that nice when somebody listens to you when you're upset and struggling? Uh, and it's nice just to have somebody listen to what you have to say. Not even necessarily have to respond or offer advice, but just hear what you have to say. Good. All right, one more, and then I'll let you have this painful exercise end. Taking care of their needs. And that can look like all sorts of things, right? Um, I'm going to share that as one. As you think about that, that's one of the ways that I've seen that value expressed here. We have the food bank uh, helping meet people's needs. And sometimes it's the most basic needs. Sometimes people just need something to eat. And we have this food bank here that provides a way for that to happen. Uh, other ways we see it happen here, as Marianne mentioned, think about praying for people. We prayed here, but we have a prayer group also. Or as you talk to people and you say, I'm praying for you. There's all sorts of ways that we care for each other and that I hope you feel cared for. Okay? Um, this is, is by all means a very biblical thing for us to be doing. We see story after story of God caring for his people and encouraging the same with us. Uh, in, the, in the book of Genesis... We're going to try a different mic. Thank you. Okay. So, there it is. Dustin is very caring. He's caring for you right now so that you don't have to suffer through all that static and crackle. Thank you, Dustin. And I, as much as I said that jokingly, that is a caring gesture for him to come down. It's got to be a little embarrassing. So, and it is already better, right? Are we good? There's not crackling. Good. Um, the Bible is full of examples of us caring for others, right? God, very beginning, God has cast Adam and Eve out of the garden. Now, this might seem like a strange place to talk about care being shown. What did God do? For Adam and Eve, as he cast them out, that showed that he cared for them. He put clothes on them. Remember, that was the whole deal about why they're getting cast out. Now they're aware of their nakedness. They've eaten the forbidden fruit. They have this greater awareness of what's happening, and God decides to clothe them. We just finished the story of Joseph. Much care was shown there by Joseph as he interpreted the dreams of people, as he took care of all of Egypt by preparing for the famine, right, storing all the grain. As you think about the story of Ruth, Ruth cared for Naomi by staying with her, by supporting her after 
they had lost everybody else. Boaz provided for Ruth and Naomi. Uh, Boaz giving Ruth work and feeding her and shelter and, and ultimately marrying them. Jesus cares for so many as we read through Scripture, healing the blind, the lame, the, the deaf. He tells story after story about caring for other people. Remember the story of the unmerciful servant? This is a story of care, ultimately, and forgiveness. The king uh, has this person in front of him who owes him this huge debt, one that is impossible to pay. And the king shows care by doing what? He forgives the debt of that person. But that unmerciful servant goes out and goes to somebody else that has a, a much smaller debt and in the exact opposite move shows no care to this other person begging for help and some mercy and he, he beats him and, and it doesn't go well. And of course the king finds out about the servant's actions and ends up throwing him in jail until he can pay off the debt. Jesus' disciples go on and care for other people, going out healing people, uh, casting out demons over and over again. We see them doing that same work that Jesus did. And Jesus, when he's there, challenges the status quo of the religious folks. And yet does, Jesus does, you see, over and over again what shouldn't be done. He ate and drank with who? Jesus goes and eats and drinks with the sinners. Right? They, they list them, the prostitutes, tax collectors, the lepers, right? seriously diseased people, okay? very contagious. But Jesus is right there in the middle of all of those people who are on the fringes of society. These were not the nice folks that you associated with, and yet Jesus makes it a point to go after them every single time. These are not the folks that the good churchy folks would be hanging out with. A good Jew of the day would not go to them because you had to stay ceremonially clean. You just don't go by those people. But Jesus defies that. And he cared for everyone. He says himself he has come to seek and to save the lost. That he desires all people, God desires all people to be saved. Now, as we hear those stories, what's our reaction to the Pharisees? They're kind of jerks. How could they treat people that way? Don't they know the right thing to do? But let me ask you, if Jesus were here today, just like he was then, standing before us, walking among us, who would he be going to visit? Jesus went to these people, remember the prostitutes, tax collectors, all these sinners, sinners, parentheses, okay, talking about the kingdom of God, telling them that God's kingdom was one of grace and forgiveness. Story of the unmerciful servant. He tells that story so that they see there is much forgiveness, that they too are loved by God. No, they weren't living righteous lives, but that was the whole point of it. Who was living a righteous life? So if Jesus was here today, who are the people on the fringes? Who are the people that need to hear God's love because the church isn't telling it to them? You don't have to answer this one. This is just in your head, right? Would it be somebody like Zacchaeus? Remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus, the wee little man was he, right? This guy was an absolute cheat. Horrible. But Jesus approaches him and says, Zacchaeus, come down, because why? What's he going to do with Zacchaeus that night? He's going to go to his house and have dinner. Who is Jesus going to go see? He cares for all. Now, you know what? I, I misspoke a minute ago. I said that if Jesus was here walking and talking and living amongst us, but you have to understand that he is here, in a manner of speaking, in you. Romans 6 tells us that in baptism you have been joined to Jesus. Our name says it, Emmanuel, God with us. Our tagline says it, Emmanuel, life 
with you. He has saved you from your own sin and brokenness, from the own things that you disobey, not just for yourself, but that you would be a light, that you would care for others to go, as he, said, he tells us at the end of Matthew, go, make more disciples, baptizing and teaching. That baptizing, join them to me, he says. He told Peter, feed my sheep. He wants us to tell others that he loves them, that he has saved them too. The way that story is supposed to go is Jesus has saved me. Here's what I have done. And maybe you talk about your sin. But he still had mercy on me. He still has mercy on me. And he can have mercy for you. He has that mercy for you. And he has called you then to care for everyone not to a special club of us that gets to get together on Sunday mornings, not just those of us who think and act the same, not at all. You heard in the reading today that he challenges us. Love who? Love your enemies. It's easy to love and to like those who who are like us. It's easy to love most of you. It's easy to love those of us in this room who who are so like each other. Much harder to love those who have wronged you. Much harder to love those who you're in conflict with or who you disagree with politically or or whatever. It could be racial, it could be be, uh, culturally, and those things are present. And we can't deny that that they are. We have to be honest with ourselves and say, you know what, we treat people differently because of those things. And let me tell you, it is a sin. It is absolutely a sin to be that way towards people because of those reasons. But this is exactly what Jesus calls you to do, to care for everyone because he has. Who did he die for? Everyone, including you. Literally, Jesus has died for everyone, right? That, the, the literally gets kind of misused, but, but re, really and truly, Jesus died for everyone's sins. And the irony about his statement about loving your enemies is that it's exactly what he did. Katie touched on it in the children's message. We, in our sin, are enemies of God. When you sin, you raise your fist and you say, I don't need you to tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I know better. Jesus says, I know, and I still love you. You're wrong, but I still love you. Jesus died showing, Jesus' death, I should say, shows his care for you. And for every single soul on this earth that was, is, and ever will be, And it is not up to you or me to decide who is worthy to hear that message. It's not up to us to decide who gets to receive that love through us. Jesus has called you to care for everybody. And he mentions this part today about your enemy because he knows that's going to be the hard one. To love those that you don't like. Our job is to simply be that sower, like you heard in the story last week, who casts that seed of God's word, God's love, and some of it's going to fall on rocky ground and not do a thing. Some's going to get choked out by the things of this world, but some, some, as I pray it's happening in you and has happened, will sprout up and bear good fruit as God's love interacts with you and God's love does its thing with you and produces more love. And again, we've seen that here at Emmanuel. I see it over and over. We do care for each other greatly because we do pray for each other. There's the ladies that prepare meals for families. A a, a lot of hard work, but a very simple act of providing food for people that are grieving. Teachers caring for their students far beyond the classroom work, taking extra time, working with students. We have elders checking on members, supporting uh, people, supporting the food ministry. Over and over, there is so much good happening here, but there is so much room for growth. So much other work to do, and there's so many that still do not know. May God continue to foster this 
value within us that we care for everyone, for all, because every person matters. And may we especially grow in those areas that we are challenged with to reach out to people that we struggle with for whatever reason that may be. May God give us his grace and his love to do just that, even as he has loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God then, which surpasses all understanding, may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.